We are in three-dimensional space. Einstein added a time dimension and made 4D space. Then, what does a six-dimensional space look like? Here is how to fill six-dimensional space. Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm Professor Peter. If you want to know how many dimensions a space has, you can count the number of quantities to specify the location of a spot in that space. Let's consider a plane. On it, we have a point. You can express its location using two numbers in the xy coordinates. Therefore, the planar space has two dimensions. Likewise, we can explain 3D space. In 3D space, we can show the location of a point using three numbers. Now let's go back to the two-dimensional plane. This time, let's consider a vehicle instead of a spot. We can express the location of the car using two numbers. But it's not enough because we cannot specify the direction of the car using the two numbers. We need an additional number to show the angle here. We will call the direction information of the car orientation. Unlike a point, the status of an object cannot be fully expressed by its location. You should consider its orientation. Therefore, on the plane, you need three numbers to specify the location and orientation of an object. Then, how many numbers do you need to express the location and orientation of an object in 3D space? First of all, we need three numbers for location. How many numbers should be used for orientation? To understand the orientation of an object in 3D space, let's use the head motion. We can change the head's orientation using three types of motions. Shaking, nodding, tilting. By combining these three motions, you can make any orientation of our head. If you're interested in drones or air vehicles, you must have heard of pitch, roll, and yaw. These are the three motions that change the orientation of airplanes. These three motions are equivalent to the motions of a head that we talked about. Consequently, we need six quantities to express or control the position and orientation of an object in 3D space. This means you need math, science, and technology for six-dimensional space. This concept is also important in robotics. Industrial robots for automation in manufacturing are often used for assembly of mechanical parts or control of machining tools. For this, robots should control the position and orientation of these objects. How many inputs do you need to control the six quantities? Yes, you need six inputs. So many industrial robots have six joints, each of which has a control motor. Robot arms were designed inspired by the human arms, but there is one big difference. The shoulder and the wrist can rotate in three ways. Shaking, nodding, tilting. Wrist is the same. Shaking, nodding, tilting. The elbow joint is relatively simple. It gives you only one type of rotation. To control six quantities for an object, we have seven kinds of motions. Do you think one of seven arm motions is useless? No, thanks to this additional motion, we can control the arm more safely and precisely. For example, if you are bumped by someone next to you while holding a water cup, you can control it safely. Right, we are in 3D space, but in this 3D space, you can feel six-dimensional space as well. How? Think about the location of an object, as well as orientation of the object. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.